Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Motivation, the show where we dive headfirst into the most amazing minds. And Jazakallah for joining me for part two, Watkari's Yad Patel. If you missed part one, be sure to catch it on our YouTube channel. It was the importance of loving the Quran and what a beautiful topic it was. So be sure to check that. Kari, assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Wa alaikum salam, thank you so much. Today I want to talk about charity. Mm. We spoke about Quran and we spoke about the beauty of Quran. But what does the Quran say about charity and the importance of giving charity, being involved in charity? You, of course, were one of the founding members of the Alim Dad Foundation, which is a wonderful organization doing amazing things. But surely there are ayahs in the Quran that drive you to do what you're doing. So undoubtedly, you know, in many parts of the Quran, it has been spoken about charity, about zakah. And one of the pillars of Islam is undoubtedly zakah. That's why I would say to people, us as Muslims, we ought to be dominating the humanitarian fraternity because charity is a part of us. It's one of the pillars of Islam. It is what we do. It is who we are. And you know, there are also many hadith which, which, with regards to charity. And trust me, in today's world, I can undoubtedly tell you with complete confidence that Muslims are some of the biggest uh, charitable individuals on this earth. Wow. wow. SubhanAllah. Okay, no, that is brilliant. And as a Muslim, it is our duty to constantly give and give because Allah has entrusted us with money to look after those around us who don't have money. So how did you get involved in charity? What was the driving factors that pushed you towards it? And what does it make you feel when you are involved in a charitable organization? So SubhanAllah, you know, my entire life, my heart was always with the downtrodden, with the poor, you know, with the impoverished, you know, those that have been suffering, wherever they may be. My heart was always soft towards them. And again, you know, our hearts, it's all about our hearts. If our hearts are soft, it will drive us to do good. And that's about it. And it's so important for us just to work and focus on our hearts. Because once you soften your heart, you will do amazing things. You will do amazing things. I mean, uh, whatever it may be in the world out there today, uh, some people, they, they make wealth and then they end up uh, donating all that wealth, maybe for a media strategy or something of that sort. We don't want to judge anyone. But for us as Muslims, we need to ask ourselves a question. Why do we do charity? Number one, we are motivated by the Quran. So many places in the Quran, Kareem, Allah speaks about the, the, the beauty and the goodness and the blessings and the rewards of giving charity. And then our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, there's so many hadiths and so many advices which he has given with regards to charity. And again, if you look at the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I mean, how charitable he was, how he helped people, you know, khayrun nas anfa'ahum lin nas. The best of mankind are those who help and serve mankind. And there's been so many motivating Quranic ayats, hadiths to make us go down the route of helping people, assisting people, you know, uh, being charitable, etc. And uh, again, the cherry on the top, what makes us as a Muslim, what defines us as a Muslim? Charity is part of our identity. Well, it's a pillar of our Islam and therefore without that pillar, the house is never going to be stable. So it's so important to hold that pillar really high. I heard a beautiful poem that said, when a baby is born, born into this mm -hmm. world with close first that says, I am a greedy man coming to take everything. And when that same human being passes away, that passes away with open hands and says, I have left with nothing. Beautifully said. Beautifully so said. it's so important for us while we're in this world, while we have this one chance mm -hmm. to build our Akhira, to do as much as possible, that builds as much as we possibly can in our Akhira. Because when we're standing in front of our Creator on the day of Qiyamah, mm. He is going to ask us, I gave you this, and what did you do with it? So surely charity plays a major role in building our Akhira. And uh, today, in today's times, there's many opportunities for us to be engaged in charitable activities. Again, you know, I will, st I will stress on this point, the humanitarian fraternity. I mean, we ought to be at the front line. We ought to be there. When those people are coming off those rubber dinghies, wet, hungry, cold, we ought to be there to help and assist them. Whether it may be the floods in Pakistan, or whether it may be the earthquakes in Haiti, whatever they are, natural or man-made disasters, it's imperative 
that we be there on the front line to help and assist. Why? Because Islam tells us that we are the, that charity is one of our pillars. It tells us the benefits of charity, the rewards of charity. And again, we, every one of us want to follow the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was the most charitable individual to set foot on this earth. We want to be here like him. We, we aspire to be like him. And we are his followers. So just be like the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And trust me, you will be out there in the world helping people, assisting people. And to be honest and frank with you, uh, our communities, alhamdulillah, I can, I, can, I can stand for this. They are some of the most charitable communities in the world today. Allah, alhamdulillah. Reward, Allah reward all of them, inshallah. What if someone is watching today and says, I'm in need of charity. I don't even have money to give, but I want to give some sort of charity. Hmm. What can I give as charity? So many a times people say to us, you know, I haven't been blessed. I don't have resources. I don't have finances. I can't donate. What can I do? And I would say to them, donate your time. Donate your expertise. So it's not only about giving money. You can donate your heart. Go out there to an old age home. Go to an orphanage. Spend time with those children. Give them love. You know, the ch charity is not only about giving money. It's not only about giving resources. There are many avenues to charity. And we need to exhaust each and every one of them. You know, as, as I mentioned to you, spending time with the downtrodden, going out there, motivating them like the show, you know, subhanAllah Muhammad, just go out there. You know, I, we have many opportunities to engage with the Syrian orphans. You know, we go to some of these schools and some of these orphanages. And more than anything else, you know, they thank you for your time. They thank you for your moral support. They thank you. In, they're not even focused on the humanitarian aid that you brought to give them. They're more focused and they're more thankful and appreciative of you making that artist's long journey from South Africa all the way to their homes to spend time with them, to give them, to reassure them, to give them that support. And again, there are so many different facets of charity. As I said to you, mm. some people exploit charity to look good in the world, you know, to look all um, you know, so, uh, so, so generous, etc. And they use it as a publicity stunt. But we as Muslims, we do charity because we know what it does for our soul, subhanAllah. And what the right hand gives, the left hand shouldn't even know. Is that correct? So, I mean, in terms of charity, do we then showcase what we're doing to create awareness of what we're doing? Or do we showcase it to actually say, you know what, look at me, I'm doing this. Intentions are so important when it comes to charity. No, of course, yes, uh, undoubtedly, you know, uh, intentions, in the amalu bin niya, our actions are judged according towards our intentions. But in today's world, we, are, it's so complex and uh, the media speaks so negatively of Muslims. And I say, but hold on, you know, you portray us to be such negative individuals. It is because we are very humble. What the right hand gives, the left hand, the left hand shouldn't know. But I personally feel that in today's times, we need to let the world know who Muslims truly are, how charitable we are, how generous we are, how helpful we are, how we go the extra mile to help people, irrespective of race, religion, creed, culture, or any geographical boundaries. We as Muslims, we are there to help and assist people. And yes, there's proof in the pudding. Look at Muslim organizations such as the, such as the Ali Dar Foundation. You know, it has been serving all of humanity, all human beings, irrespective of race, religion, creed, or culture. We have been to different parts of the world to assist people that have been in need. And this is proof that we as Muslims, we're not as negative as you portray us. We are positive individuals. We're full of vibrance, energy. We bring good to the world, not only through our charitable activities, our humanitarian activities, our humanitarian projects, but in so many different other ways. In so many different other ways, we are positive individuals who only bring about positivity. You know, they say it's not your degree, it's not your bank balance, it's not the businesses you own that defines you as an individual. It's your character that defines you as an individual. And Islam is all about character. And charity builds character. Walking with humility builds character. Lowering your gaze builds in fact, character. In fact, speaking about character, many people come to me and they say to me, our hearts are hard. How do I soften my heart? I say to them, spend time in an orphanage or spend time in a refugee camp. 
I've had the opportunity to be with some of the hardest of people and hardest of souls. You know, the, the real macho men. I've taken them to some of these refugee camps. And trust me, they said to me, they've actually broken down in these refugee wow. camps. It softened them. It really humbled them. And I can say to anyone out there, if you want an experience of a lifetime, join us, come with us, be there on, on, on the front lines, in the refugee camps, giving food, giving aid, helping people, spending time with the children, you know, putting a smile on their face. And that's the real joy of life. And yes, one of the greatest benefits of giving charity, it gives you that self-satisfaction. Wow, Alhamdulillah. If you want to know how to soften your heart, then charity is definitely one of the answers for that. Our brother here, Kari Ziyad Patel, is really blessing us with some unbelievable knowledge in terms of fixing our hearts up. But we'll see you after the break to continue this wonderful conversation. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Kari, so you are involved in so many charity projects. Can you just tell us a few of the charity projects and what, what do they entail and how has it helped the individuals who you give the charity to? So subhanAllah, you know, alhamdulillah, through the fuzzle of Allah, His favor upon us, uh, we've had many opportunities with many different uh, humanitarian projects and humanitarian responses, emergency relief responses. But I would say there's a few which stand out for me, which really touch my heart. And of course, yes, you know, it's been a moving uh, moment for me as well. I think the very first one was, I would say, uh, during the 2004 or 2005 the tsunami, which took place the infamous tsunami of 2004, the Boxing Day tsunami. You know, to see the, 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 the mammoth destruction of what a tsunami can do mm. and how things can turn around overnight. And within a day or two, how many thousands of people had, 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 had been erased off the surface of the earth. I think for me, that is one, one disaster which really stood out. Okay. It really stood out. And especially our response in the days after that, being on the ground, you know, seeing what the disaster has done and being there to assist people. The second one, uh, I headed a team of uh, humanitarians to the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. Uh, firstly, Haiti is very far from, from here. Uh, it took us about 26 hours to get there. Uh, but for me personally, I would say that the motivation and the passion of humanitarians you know, to transcend so many continents, you know, the seas, to get to a place on earth you know, where people would even deem them as insignificant individuals and to be there to help and assist them. You know, and I would say when a person makes a dua for you, irrespective of who the person is, Allah is listening to that dua. But to be there on the ground and receive the duas of those individuals. Again, uh, to see the destructive nature of that earthquake and how in, in, in a matter of a few seconds, how the entire country was turned upside down and how many people perished in that disaster. And then the last one which really caught my attention, uh, again, which really it caused me to introspect and reflect and ponder of our purpose on earth, was again in 2018, when we had seen uh, some very sure real phenomenon which had played out on this earth, you know, things which we had never seen before. I went out to an area called Palu in Indonesia, okay. and the two square kilometers of the earth actually liquefied. And again, in that, we were part of the search and rescue mission, trying to find uh, survivors. Uh, again, even in, in Haiti, trying to find survivors. But unfortunately, here in, in Palu, the entire earth liquefied and was sucked into the, into, into, into the core of the earth. And going into all of that, uh, trying to find survivors, all we had pulled out was just bodies. But what really moved me when we found a little baby, we found a little baby in, 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 in that uh, disaster. Again, uh, the Quran al-Kareem, we see some of the ayahs of the Quran al-Kareem playing out before our eyes. In Surah Al-Zilzal, mm. in the second ayah, الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا In my life, I'd seen this on two occasions. 2005, there was an earthquake in Pakistan. The Pakistani military had taken us to an area to see and witness this ayah in reality, where the Quran had spewed out its burden. So there was a, a river, and from the river, an entire mountain of soil had come through. A huge mountain was not there before, and this had come through after the earthquake. Again, I saw this phenomenon play out in Palu in 2018 in Indonesia, where mud had come out of the ground and it engulfed everything within its path, everything within its, within its path. So in the line of work that we are involved in, you know, at times we, we, we see some very uh, sure real stuff, you know, uh, some really unique things, you know, which really intrigues the mind. And these are things which motivate us to realize that life on earth is very short. 
Uh-huh. Our life on earth is very short. We can be sitting in the studio now and there can be an earthquake and the ground can, can, can engulf us and it can just take us in. And this is life. So there is no reason for us to walk on this earth with pride, with arrogance, because if Allah wants the earth to swallow us, it can swallow us right now. So for me, yes, you know, going to these different parts of the earth, uh, to different parts of the world, involved in these various humanitarian projects, uh, in, in these emergency relief responses, you know, it has been a university for me. It's been, besides being a life lesson, oh. it's been a university for me, and it has been some of the greatest lessons for me that I've taken from these experiences. Alhamdulillah, those are such touching stories and just to actually see the signs of Allah from a different perspective where we sit here in South Africa and yes, we do have load shedding and we're going through a bit of turmoil at the moment, but it's nowhere near what these people have gone through, yet you've witnessed it and surely it is life-changing. Kari, I really want to acknowledge you for the work that you are doing. May Allah accept every bit of work that you're doing. May Allah continue to bless your voice, to warm the hearts and souls of people through your voice. And for people when they hear your voice to say, I want to be a Muslim because what that did to me, nothing in this whole world has ever done to me. I really want to acknowledge you for the individual you are and for the work that you are doing. You know, we thank Allah Azza wa Jal. And many times I would say this, it's not our doing. It's perhaps maybe the goodness, or the good doings, or the good deeds of our parents or grandparents or great-grandparents. You know, they had done something good in their lives, which has accepted, Allah loved it, and Allah, we are just simply just reaping the blessings of that. We are simply just getting the rewards of it. But you know, every single day of my life, I make this dua. Oh Allah, accept us for the khidmah and the service of the Qur'an, insan, which is humanity, and the deen of Islam, till our very end. Ameen. Till our very end. Ameen. And that's a dua that I make daily, that Allah, accept us right till our end to serve the Qur'an, to serve humanity and to serve your deen of Islam. Talking again a bit about charity, and I would say this has been one of the most humbling factors for every one of us. And many times of, on, on my various charitable experiences and missions, I had seen people, you know, one person came to me and he said to me, I will give you my motorbike for a cold glass of water. Wow. You know, and I say to myself, we have so many blessings and we are so unappreciative. You go to parts of the world where a single glass of water or a morsel of food is so significant. So we really really need to introspect. We have to reflect, take stock of our lives and understand who we are, what we are and where we are heading. You know, we need a moral compass and the best moral compass we can have is to go down the direction of charity. Get involved in charity. It's going to make you a better human being, a better person. It's going to humble you. It's going to bring about love in you. It's going to soften you. And this is what our deen dictates. I have a beautiful akhlaq. Amin, amin. Now to my final question, a question that most of the guests say, okay, like it, it leaves them a bit stumped. It is a hypothetical question. Yeah. Many, many, many years from now, Allah grant you a long life to, to do as many charitable things that you need to do. Your voice resonates around the whole world and you've done lectures and you've done talk shows and everything, maybe even written books. But for some reason, all has to be erased from the face of this earth. But Kari can leave the world with three pieces of advice. What would your three pieces of advice to the world be? So subhanAllah, for me, the first advice is every single day of our lives. Connect with the Quran. Recite the Quran, Karim. If you cannot recite it, listen to the Quran. Let it not be that a day of our lives pass and we had not recited a bit of the Quran, Karim, or we had not connected with the Quran, Karim, in any way whatsoever. For some odd reason, one may become incapacitated, but even in that, in, in, in that state, let it not be that we have passed a day on this earth with not reciting the Qur'an Kareem. The second thing is that we must hold steadfast onto our salah and our prayer. What defines us? What defi- Imagine we living on this earth without prayer, without salah. That soul has become completely deprived of anything. It's an empty soul. So again, food for the soul comes to the Quran, it comes through salah, it comes to zikr, etc. So the second thing is that we must hold on to our salah. Okay. Come what may, snow, hail, sunshine, whatever it may be, hold strongly onto oh, your salah. As long as you're holding onto your salah, you will be protected. You will have a protective covering. And the third thing is that every day of our lives, 
try and be of some assistance or some service or some goodness to another human being. It costs us nothing. Even a smile is sadaqah. Even a smile is sadaqah. So be good to somebody every day of our lives. This is my formula for life. We recite the Quran Karim every day. Make sure we are steadfast on every single salah and impact somebody's heart for that day. Make somebody smile. Make somebody feel good. Wow. You know, wow, alhamdulillah. it's all about motivating. <laughs> and that's the, the, the name of the show. And I love the name of the show. Because we want to motivate people. Motivate somebody for the day. Alhamdulillah. Even what, whoever it may be, whether it may be a beggar, or maybe, maybe the, the, the world's richest person, or the most significant man on earth, or maybe a president, or maybe a peasant, whoever it may be, motivate somebody for the day. Oh, wow, man. This is so motivational. I'm getting motivated by this, and I know you are getting motivated by this as well. Today's show was about charity. And remember something. We were born to give, but we were educated for greed. So let us do what we were born to do and give from yourself every single day. This is motivation, and let me motivate you.